So next, we'll be understanding concepts one by one by actually doing them live. Like we will we'll try to mimic what, what we are learning on the uh, uh, keynote and we'll try to do it as much as we can on the developer console. Okay, I'll keep explaining you things by taking example and help of, you know, probably real time examples or doing it via the code level. Oops, object oriented programming structure. Is that what it is called? What is oops? What's the full form of oops? Right? It's not a song for sure. It might be a song, but that's not what we are referring here. What we are referring to in terms of oops is basically object oriented programming. Right? Object oriented programming. What is object oriented programming? Everything is considered as an object. Right? We, we talked about Salesforce, right? How does Salesforce handle things? Accounts, contacts, opportunities. What are all of these things? These are objects. Right? And objects have attributes and these objects are used by applications to deliver a functional value. Right? Now let's understand some key concepts and let's start from the very beginning. Now we'll start to understand what is an Apex class and what are objects. Okay? You see I built a class here, right? I clicked on file, said new and I said new Apex class. But what is a class? Right? A class is a template or a blueprint through which objects are created. An object is nothing but an instance of a class. Too much? That's okay. Be with me. A class can contain variables and methods. Variables are part of the class and they define or rather describe the state of the class. So they are called member variables. Okay. Methods are used to control behavior of a class as to what it does and what it can do. Alright. You can define a class with another class inside it. It can only be one level deep. Fine. Classes should be named in sentence case and names should always be meaningful. Okay, makes sense. We read through the lines. It's time to understand. So a class is a template or a blueprint, right? So let's say you have a mission in hand, right? It's your mission is to stop all the violence in the world. What would you do if you are given that particular job you'd probably create a template or a blueprint of how to stop the war or how to stop violence in the world right and that's how you'll execute things first of all you'll decide okay these are the 20 people i need from the world so that once they are in agreement i can stop the war i can stop the chaos i can stop all violence in the world okay and once you have the 20 people and you have the steps Meaning, first I'll talk to these three guys, then I'll talk to these five people. I'll talk to these three guys again, and then I'll tell them to talk to each other. And then these eight people will be in sync. I'll talk to the remaining 12 people, and I'll get everyone in sync, and there'll be no violence. If these 20 people are in agreement, and they sign a, sign a formal agreement that I prepare. Right? So, the entire process of stopping the violence throughout the world needs a template or a blueprint. You can assume every class kind of solves a purpose for which it is built. In our use case, we wanted to send out a greeting message, right? So this particular class, wish me luck, has a method that sends out a greeting message. What is this class made for? It is made for greeting us. Make sense? Right? So any kind of utility, any kind of business function that needs server side interpretation or server side interaction would require a class to be executed. Right? And that class would prob will contain a template or a set of variables and methods that will help achieve that particular function. Okay? That's what is written here. So a class can contain variables and methods. Variables are part of the class. Yes, variables would be part of the class and they'll define or rather describe the state of the class. Okay, that's why they are called member variables. So if you have 20 people you want to talk to, they would be the members, right? Methods are used to control behavior of a class as to what it does and what it can do. So you'll probably define some rules, right? I'll go to this particular country to talk to these five members and you'll define the steps that you'll probably take in order to ensure that violence is stopped for those particular five guys, right? Those, the steps that you take with your member variables are nothing but the methods. Those steps are the methods. Okay, so methods are used to control behavior. Once I do this, then I'll do this. Once this is over, I'll do this. So that's basically part of your methods. 
okay now you can define a class with another class inside it and it can only be one level deep meaning a class can be defined which is basically this definition right here you can define one more class inside so you can simply write public class another class and you can save it this will save up fine okay so you can do this however you cannot do one more level deep so if you say public class one final class and you try to save this bit right here this should throw you an error because you can only go one level deep all right so if you see it says it's throwing you two problems so i'll get rid of this particular um, line here i think there was a problem with this double triple s let's get rid of this write the correct line and now save it right so if you notice now the error is correct it says inner types are not allowed to have inner types so you see this is already inside a class how do i say inside a class look at this bracket where does it close here which means anything that's part of this particular class is li lying here this class is a inner class to this outer class so there cannot be one more level down so a class cannot be inside a class which is inside another class as simple as that so i have to get rid of this particular line and i can probably define it here outside this inner class and then it should save up fine so that's what that line means okay and then classes should be named in sentence case what is sentence case basically every word that you write should start with a capital letter w m l f a right i've seen a lot of pathetic naming conventions you people have used and i've seen a lot of people messing up the system just because how things are being named right i've seen things like test utility what's the meaning of this it is does not make sense to me first of all the spelling is incorrect right second of all it is not in the case structure it should ideally be right thirdly it's not really telling me what what does it do what is test why are you using the keyword test and why are you calling it then a, a utility so it's always safe to write meaningful names why it, it makes sense right and it's all about making sense at the end i'm telling you this tomorrow day after tomorrow six months later six years later if you are told to refer this particular code how will you understand what this code, code does by seeing the names of the classes the methods the variables if they are very clear in terms of what they do you don't have to understand the code by going completely in, inside it or uh, in a granular level okay which means another class is not a right name right it does not make sense but wish me luck for apex and greet me these methods and class names are fine so and that's how they should be so the class names should always be in sentence case which means the every word that you write should start with a capital letter that's what it means that's a good practice it does not mean that it will not save if you put a small letter but yeah it's it's your wish my my job is to tell you what what's the best practice and what looks neat and what looks impressive okay perfect that was about classes just one last thing to add to make it very clear what are classes one one more example the violence in the war might have gone a bit crazy but see to make the right dish variables are the ingredients whereas methods are the steps as simple as it can be if you have to create a dish for family you would define some variables variables would be milk powder right you would probably need cheese right you'll need some pasta right and you'll need let's say milk right you'll need tomatoes and blah blah these are your variables things that you need as ingredients right and then what you'll do is you'll say first take pasta and boil it in water step one strain the water step two right boil a pan and heat some milk right add cheese right and then add tomatoes then add boiled pasta right these are your steps right i'm not making pasta here i'm not hungry don't worry but these are your steps so these are your ingredients meaning they are your variables right and they'll vary right cheese would be probably two cubes one cube milk powder would be 100 grams 550 grams based on the requirement pasta would be the quantity that you want to add they are varying and they are variables right and then you have a method that defines 
to make pasta this is the steps that you have to take okay so to make the right dish or to create the right class to serve a business function variables can be considered the ingredients and the methods are basically nothing but a set of steps i hope now that makes sense all right and these are throwing errors because there's no proper definition of the variable done correctly i'll just get rid of them and i'll save it again we'll understand what are variables we'll understand how to note write them or you know how to denote them we'll do all of that okay so i hope the idea of class is is kind of clear